Well, the story of Esther, which I've just finished reading, is a lesson in patience and trust and providence. It's a lesson in patience because really, even although it's a short book, the main things in the book seem to take a long time. If you were the character of Mordecai or Esther herself, you would have needed great patience in order to just sit calmly in the circumstances that you find yourselves. And not just sit calmly, but also trust. And this I think is the key lesson in the story of Esther, is trust, trusting God even when the circumstances are being constructed maliciously against you. And that was exactly what was happening through Haman against the Jews and in particular Mordecai and then subsequently Esther. So patience in the circumstances, but then trust in God in the circumstances as well. Not just waiting for something to happen, but waiting for God to do something in the midst of the circumstances. But I think one of the key things though that really caught my eye, especially in the second half of the story, is the providence of God comes shining through. And the particular moment when things seem to turn is when the king just happens not to be able to sleep very well. And so he wants something to fill in the time. So out of all the options that he could have gone for to keep himself entertained or distracted during the wee hours when he couldn't get back to sleep, he chose to have someone come and read to him from the annals of history of his own kingdom and even the recent events which had just happened. And in that, he was reminded of this fellow called Mordecai who just happened to have overheard an assassination attempt being plotted by two nefarious figures and then subsequently the plot was unraveled and uncovered and the king was saved. And so the king has this story read to him again and says, hey, I remember that. Whatever happened to Mordecai, how did we bless him? How did we honor him? And so then the story starts to turn at that point very strongly toward a redemptive theme, moving out of the great dangers that were looming and into a deliverance, an exodus. But the part that really caught my eye was just this idea that the king just happened not to be able to sleep and then just happened to have that part of the history read to him. And it's not luck and it's not chance, it's providence. It's the quiet hand of God moving in the life of a person, completely unbeknownst to them, and God is orchestrating through the natural circumstances of their life, supernatural movement that God wants to happen. So he refreshes his memory about what Mordecai did to benefit the, the, the monarchy and then arranges for Mordecai to be blessed. And this is at a humiliating expense to Haman. And then it starts to unravel for Haman, who was really the architect of very calculated evil towards the Jews and Mordecai and Esther. And so that's part of the undoing of Haman, who eventually suffers the consequence of the grisly death that he had actually organized for Mordecai, ultimately leading to redemption for Mordecai, Esther, and the Jews who were scattered far beyond the borders and into the other kingdoms and nations, leading then to the Feast of Purim being commemorated every year for this deliverance, this providence of God on behalf of his people. So again, just a refresher that even when we think that God might not be involved or is taking too long or is out of the scene and we can't see what's going on, there's these little providential movements and nudges that I think remind us that God is absolutely present and active in our lives. And I think if any of us look back over the storyboard of our lives, we can absolutely see little junctions and moments and conversations and circumstances that we hadn't really planned, but we looked back and we realized they had immense consequence for the rest of our lives sometimes. In, in the benefit and the blessing for us and our family that we hadn't really planned, but it, it's a God thing. It's a grace that we receive. And so be encouraged that even sometimes when you think that God may, you know, not be very involved in your circumstances or you can't tell what's going on, the story of Esther reminds us that woven through all of those little serendipitous moments and movements of our life, 
God is pleased to bring his grace upon us and to have his kingdom come and his will be done. Till next time, peace.